Hi everyone, welcome back to the MPO. I'm Gerard Salonga and joining me today is my good friend and our principal second violin, Mr. Timothy Peters. Hey Gerard, how are you doing today? Good, thanks for joining me, Tim. Yeah, All right, pleasure. we got Beethoven VI, right? Pastoral Symphony. Um, it's different from the others, for sure. I want to know, what, what's your sort of Beethoven story? We're celebrating the 250th year of Beethoven. Everybody's got their own Beethoven story, man. I want to know, what's yours? Like, what's your big entree into Beethoven? Um, well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Beethoven VI is unlike any other symphony uh, around, especially within the, the, the context of, of the nine Beethoven symphonies. It's a really, really special piece, and i um, always so thrilled to see it on a season program. Um, uh, man, I've been just just loving Beethoven symphonies my whole life, um, and I was really, really uh, fortunate as a young player um, in high school. I played in the Cedar Rapids Symphony in my home state of Iowa in the USA. Uh, how old were you when you did this? Uh, I was 15 years old, and I won't say how many years ago that was, <laughs> but <laughs> okay, it, was fair a, enough. it was a bit ago. <laughs> and um, it was amazing to have the opportunity, actually as a student at that age, playing in the professional orchestra, and also having a chance to, over a course of two years, they programmed, because you know, the Cedar Rapids Symphony wasn't like the MPO where we do 44 concerts a year. Uh, Cedar Rapids Symphony was a, a five program a year, you know, community orchestra. Okay. And so to do a, a Beethoven cycle took two years to do. Right. Um, so my junior and senior years of high school, uh, yeah, every single program that we did in Cedar Rapids had one Beethoven symphony on it. And to be introduced to you know that repertoire and that literature at that age, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, what a luxury! Fantastic. And was it well received? But did people really, at the time, did people sort of really gravitate towards these Beethoven symphonies? I mean, some some symphonies are more famous than others, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but as a, as a whole, did the, did it did it did it sort of make uh, a nice stamp on the community with Beethoven's music? I mean, the great variety you'll find from the mm -hmm. first all the way to the ninth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the I mean, the concerts were always sold out. I mean, this is uh, every orchestra around the world. If you want to have a, a great, a great audience, you know, program Beethoven, and for good reason. These mm -hmm. these symphonies are just the most amazing uh, pieces that cover the whole expanse of of human experience and human emotions, and especially the 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 later on you go in the symphonies. Uh, you know, if you're doing the the early symphonies one two. Uh, you know, you'll you'll go through all the emotions over the course of you know, you know, one symphony. When you get to number three, you'll go through all the human emotions in one movement. That's right. <laughs> you know, then if you get to number nine, you go through all, all, every single human emotion in you know five measures or something yeah. like this. So it's 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 amazing to have the have the chance to go through so many of the symphonies at, at one time. And as a as a violinist, I think it's um, you know, we bring a different experience to to these symphonies. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us violinists that have played the violin sonatas, the ten sonatas, or uh, we've done you know so many of the string quartets. Right. And when you compare how these symphonies fit in chronologically to these pieces, then you see really you know just the genius of of, of Beethoven, where um, you know the, all the violin sonatas are so early in his output and they're so youthful, and even you get to the eighth violin sonata, and the eighth violin sonata is still written uh, like around the time of the second symphony. So that's how early they are. And the ninth symphony, the ninth sonata, which is this magnet, you know, opus, is still would be very, very much his early period. Mm -hmm. Then you get to comparing, you know, two pieces that are right after each other, like the fifth and sixth symphony, where there are adjacent opus numbers in the fifth, which is so dramatic and so muscular and so intense. And then you get to the sixth, you know, which is right afterwards, pastoral and, you know, just scenes of nature. And then you have another moment later where you have the Opus 95 string quartet, you know, the serioso, just absolutely driven, manic drama. And then the next piece he writes is Opus 96, the violin sonata. Mm -hmm. Absolutely more like the Sixth Symphony, pastoral, so mm -hmm. elegant, so gentle. And yeah, so like, that's what I love being a violinist coming to these symphonies, having an experience um, prior to being in an orchestra. It, for me, it just enhances how incredible these, these pieces are and how he could just flip the emotion switch, you know, just at the, at the drop of a hat. It really is, it's amazing. It's pretty, it's pretty genius. He was a special guy. Mm -hmm. um, now, we talk, we talk about the MPO. It's got 
it's the musicians represent 26 countries. Mm -hmm. And you're from the United States. Mm -hmm. Can you quickly tell us what is your NPO story? How'd you, how'd you get here? Coming from the States? Yeah, it's, um, it's a long trip. <laughs> 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 um, you know, at the time I was, uh, I was teaching in, uh, in a primary school. Honestly, and you know the audition trail for musicians is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many musicians going for so few jobs, and at that time, this is like 2010, 2011, the American world hadn't really recovered from the 2008 um, economic okay. bounce. So there were not a lot of jobs open uh, in the U.S. at that time, uh, and so you know at the time I was like, you know, I've never thought about living overseas, but maybe. Maybe I should, because I, I'd go on, you know, musicalchairs.com, and I, I would see there's always a million auditions in Europe, mm -hmm. and that you, you look in the U.S. and there's just, you know, crickets, <laughs> just <laughs> nothing. It's like so. Uh, it's like I'm just gonna go for it. You know, I'll just I'll I'll find an orchestra in, in Europe, and I'll. So I, I sent off a CV, and I got a reply from the the Danish National Symphony Orchestra, and they invited me to audition. So I said, great, that sounds cool. I've never been to Denmark. And I said, well, that's a really long trip for one audition. So, so, you know, all of us musicians, we have to play the numbers game and you throw as many darts at the dartboard as you can and you hope mm -hmm. something hits. So I said, well, if I'm going all that way, I should, um, I should schedule some more auditions, just give myself better odds. So I found uh, in Munich, mm -hmm. uh, Malaysian Philharmonic was auditioning uh, right around the same time. <laughs> it's like, well, Sounds interesting. My mother was living in Singapore at the time, okay. and I didn't know anything about the orchestra, but I sent off a CV, you know, and, and whatnot. And then I see oh, Qatar, you know, Symphony or Philharmonic is auditioning also. I was like, can't be that far from Germany to Qatar, is it? Well, I, think I, <laughs> I got I got a map later, and I found out that. It, <laughs> but I I flew there, so and then I said I'll fly to Spain. Well, there's an audition in the orchestra in Valencia, so I I had four. Um, four jobs that I was going for, I said, okay, so, I mean, that's a lot of frequent flyer miles I'll get at the very least. Yep. So the interesting thing is uh, the two, first two auditions I took, one in Denmark and one here in MPO, were for titled second violin positions. I flew to Denmark and I was jet lagged and I was cold because, you know, summer in Denmark is cold yep. <laughs> coming from Houston, Texas. And I walk on stage and I'm nervous and that was the first excerpt I had to play. Wow. And it's a huge hall. They're, they're, um, re, re, I think that's where they do the radio broadcast from. Mm -hmm. It's a cavernous space. And I felt just very alone as I have to start, you know, pianissimo. And I, I have a new opinion of the excerpt now. I think it's really, really hard. <laughs> and I, I didn't get the job. And <laughs> here I am in Malaysia. <laughs> so in, in one sense, maybe it's good that it didn't work out. But now I have a whole appreciation for that spot in Beethoven 6 and, and what is happening in that moment and coming out of the, yes. the third movement, the, the country dance, which is so mm -hmm. boisterous. And all of a sudden it stops you know, out of nowhere. And that feeling I had on stage in Denmark, that's a real life situation. That's what it feels like when you know, you've just played your guts out in the third movement and then all of a sudden everything stops and the basses are just tremoloing. And you, you get up and you can see this, you know, very well-known conductor, certainly on the podium. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what it feels like on stage. So I was like, I guess that's a good excerpt. Maybe we should add it to the audition list here in MPO. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> exactly. That, that's, that's real life. That's, yeah. that's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a, for me, a fantastic moment in mm -hmm. Beethoven 6. Um, what's your experience with Beethoven 6? Obviously, the first time you ever played it was in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, yeah. But professionally, you've played in orchestras around Southeast Asia. You've played orchestras in the States. You've played, mm -hmm. you've played all over the place. And you've played not just as leading the second violin section. You've also um, been a guest concertmaster. You've also been a soloist. Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, what's your professional orchestral sort of history with it? I mean, have you, how many mm -hmm. times have you played it in your career? This is um, w the one of the Beethoven symphonies that I've actually played the least. Okay. Um, and that being said, this will be, I believe, my fourth time okay. playing it. So yeah, I've, I'm on, I think, 
career cycle number four or five of, of all this stuff. Some, some of them I've done, I'm sure, seven or eight times. Um, I'm sure I've done seven that many times. Um, but six is, um, it's just a really difficult piece. And it's not a piece that's programmed as often as like number five or seven. It doesn't have the same, you know, ending. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, it doesn't, you know, where do you put it? Do you put it at the beginning of a program? Do you put it at the end of a program? It's sometimes it's a little difficult to, to, to work that in. And also, I just think it's an extremely difficult piece. Mm -hmm. So I've played it once in high school, Cedar Rapids Symphony, and then I never played it again until I came to, to Malaysia. And this is now my, I'm pretty sure it's my third time playing it here with MPO. <laughs> and I feel like every time I play it, I have an appreciation for really how hard it is. And I, I feel like the older I get, uh, these pieces don't feel easier. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they, they feel more difficult. And I realize how much um, stamina that you have to have, especially as a second violinist, mm -hmm. to play specifically this piece. I think it's one of the more exhausting ones. So playing number five, if, you know, if you're a casual listener, you probably, you know, you, you listen to it, it sounds just so fortissimo, you know, strong, mm -hmm. muscular all the time. It's like, that sounds very hard. It's much faster moments. Um, I easily am twice as tired after playing number six because of, of how long the second movement is, the, the, the scene at the brook. Right. And, and I think these types of pieces for second violins are just, they're really killers. So this is one that whenever I see it on the season program, it's like, yeah, you know, you have to, you have to rest up, you have to yeah. eat your Wheaties, you know, before, yeah. before that week comes. It's a, it's a big one. It's really, really a difficult piece. We'd listen to five and seven and three a lot, mm -hmm. and nine, of course. Mm -hmm. But six, I never really got to listen to as much. It was really only when I got together with, um, well, the, the lady who be eventually became my wife mm -hmm. while we were still dating. Mm -hmm. uh, she herself's a violinist, yeah. and she says, mm -hmm. you got to check out this, this sixth. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a set with, with Berlin? Uh, this is the Berlin okay. Karajan, yeah. I, I was listening to the Karajan Berlin six about... About 30 minutes ago, <laughs> <laughs> on the way in here. Yeah, it's yeah. an amazing recording. It's amazing. Really, really amazing. Yeah, she, she yeah. put that on. Uh, she put a, the C, that CD into the, into the stereo and says, let's listen to this one. It was, and it just rocked my world, basically. Uh, tickling all sorts of uh, things in my brain, you know, just, just the sounds that he got. And, the, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how he was able to evoke these, these feelings of the love of provincial life, you know, which, which, which he did have. And he didn't do it with anything... Mickey Mousey, it was, it was all just so well presented and, and well crafted to stir up something inside you when you listen to it. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. This is how I feel about this piece is that the word pastoral, I think, evokes something that's not quite really summing up what this piece is. Like this piece is, it's radical, it's revolutionary. And it's, um, I think every, every bit as much as, you know, number three, yeah. I mean, uh, so, you wouldn't think that about a, a piece that's about, you know, a, a slow walk along the river or, you know, or these just country dances or the cuckoos in the forest at the end of, mm -hmm. you know, the second movement. Um, but th this is, you know, what, 20 years before the Symphony Fantastique. And this is that's the right. only one of Beethoven's symphonies that has five movements and three of them Ataka. And, you know, this is, he never, never wrote any other pieces like this. This is really, really unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well... I'm looking forward to hearing the MPO perform Symphony Number no. 6 by Beethoven. Thanks for joining me here, Tim. Um, we'd like to thank San Francisco Coffee for providing us with all this sustenance. We hope you enjoy uh, Symphony Number no. 6 by Beethoven.